Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting, fascinating, uh, purely clinical neurology topic. A purely clinical neurology topic, supranuclear eye movement disorder versus infranuclear eye movement disorder. Supranuclear eye movement disorder versus infranuclear eye movement disorder. Basically, there are two points by which we can differentiate supranuclear eye movement disorder from infranuclear eye movement disorder. Both the clinical points. One, the oculocephalic reflex second the double vision with these two clinical methods we can differentiate supranuclear eye movement disorder from infranuclear eye movement disorder but to understand these two important concepts we need to understand the pathways for the saccadic eye movements and the pathway for the vestibular stimulation resulting in vo1 once we appreciate these concepts we will really enjoy the clinical neurology. Right. Eye movement disorders can be broadly divided into three parts. One, the supranuclear eye movement disorder. Second, the internuclear eye movement disorder. Third, the infranuclear eye movement disorder. The nuclei basically we mean the ocular motor nuclei that is third now, fourth now and sixth now. So the supranuclear pathways, the saccadic pathways connecting these third, fourth and sixth nerves, the saccadic pathways, these are known as supranuclear pathways and the lesions of which cause supranuclear eye movement disorder. The second concept is that the third, fourth and sixth nuclei are connected by a tract known as medial longitudinal fasciculus along with the eighth nerve. Because of the connection of these ocular motor nuclei with the eighth nerve, we are able to use eyes in various combinations, in various permutations and combinations. For example, if I need to look to the right, I can use my right lateral rectus, but on the left side, medial rectus. The lateral rectus is supplied by 6th nerve, whereas medial rectus is supplied by the 3rd nerve. So I can use simultaneously 3rd nerve on one side and 6th nerve on the other side. How is this possible? It is possible because of the medial longitudinal fasciculus which connects 3rd, 4th, 6th and with 8th nerves. So a lesion of which we call as internuclear lesion. The third is the nerves, 3rd nerve, 4th nerve, 6th nerves. If they are affected, we call it as infranuclear eye movement disorder. So basically, we have three types. The supranuclear eye movement disorders, that is the saccadic pathways. The internuclear eye movement disorder, that is the MLF being affected. The infranuclear eye movement disorder because of the third, fourth and sixth nerves. So now our discussion will, will, will involve, will revolve around the differentiation between the supranuclear eye movement disorder and the infranuclear eye movement disorder. Very fascinating clinical points, but to understand that, we need to basically understand this fascinating pathway. So, first let me talk about the saccadic, the supranuclear pathway. I am looking at the camera. Suddenly I want to look at the pen, which is on the left side. So, I immediately turn my eyes to the left side. The quick fast movements is possible because of the frontal eye fields area number 8 on the right side. The frontal eye fields area number 8 on the right side will make the eyes turn to the left side. How is this able to do it? The frontal eye fields area number 8, the saccadic pathway descends. At the level of the midbrain pons, it crosses over to the opposite side and goes to the PPRF on the left side. Paramedian pontine reticular formation. 
the left PPRF connects the sixth nerve on the same side that is lateral rectus that is the left lateral rectus and through the medial longitudinal fasciculus the right medial rectus and therefore when the frontal eye feels area number 8 is stimulated the eyes will move towards the opposite side right medial rectus and left lateral rectus when I want to look at the pen so this is the pathway the frontal eye feels area number 8 the saccadic pathway it crosses at the level of the midbrain pons goes to the PPR para median pontine reticular formation it connects the lateral rectus through 6th nerve and the third nerve medial rectus through MLF on the opposite side so when the right frontal eye fields area number 8 is initiated the eyes will move towards the opposite side medial rectus and lateral rectus so the frontal eye fields area number 8 is stimulated the eyes will move towards the opposite side almost same pathways applies to the VOR vestibular ocular reflex or oculocephalic reflex but this time the pathway originates from the vestibular apparatus that is the inner ear 8th nerve complex it, it comes from the vestibular apparatus the vestibular ocular reflex pathway comes again this also connects to the PPRF it connects the 6th nerve on the opposite side 3rd nerve on the same side through MLF and eyes are stimulated to the opposite side so the PPRF which is the center for horizontal eye movements this is connected by both the saccadic pathway coming from the frontal eye fields and the vestibular ocular reflex pathway coming from the vestibular apparatus both go and connect to the PPRF and through PPRF it is connected to the 6th nerve on the opposite side and 3rd nerve on the right side and when the front life field number 8 or the vestibular apparatus on the right side both frontal life fields area number 8 on the right side or vestibular apparatus on the right side are stimulated the PPRF is stimulated and the eyes will be pushed towards the opposite side if we know this pathway we have understood the differences between the supranuclear eye movement disorder and infranuclear eye movement disorder so now when there is supranuclear eye movement disorder that is the saccadic pathways are affected it cannot push the eyes voluntarily to the opposite side so when you ask the person to look to the right for example my pen is there if you ask me to the look to the right I can't voluntarily I cannot or you put the pen on the left side ask to look at the left I can't because the saccadic pathways are affected from the frontal eye fields area number 8 PPR of this pathway is affected so voluntarily when you ask me to look at the pen on the left side I can't look so this is a supranuclear eye movement disorder so how can we clinically diagnose since the vestibular apparatus is also connected to the PPRF on the opposite side when the vestibular apparatus is stimulated the eyes will be pushed to the opposite side so if the voluntarily if the person is not able to push the eyes to the left side because of the right frontal eye field involvement and saccadic or the supranuclear pathway involvement ask him to turn the head to the right side so we stimulate the vestibular apparatus on the right side so this connects the PPRF and connects the third nerve on the same side sixth nerve on the opposite side and pushes the eyes to the opposite side so when the saccadic pathway is not functioning properly and there is a voluntarily if you are not able to move the eyes to the opposite side you can move the eyes to the opposite side by stimulating the vestibular apparatus which is known as vestibular ocular reflex or oculocephalic reflex doll side movement so vestibular stimulation OCR will succeed in driving the eyes conjugately to the opposite side with the lesion of saccad indirectly implying it's a supranuclear pathway disorder so if a supranuclear pathway disorder is there imagine on the right side voluntarily I cannot move my eyes to the left side the conjugate gaze 
But when I stimulate my vestibular apparatus, vestibular ocular reflex, ocular cephalic reflex will push the eyes to the opposite side. And therefore, the deficit in the eye movement can be overcome by the vestibular ocular reflex. That indicates it's a supranuclear palsy. Suppose if it is intranuclear palsy, for example, third nerve or fourth nerve are involved, however much you stimulate the vestibular apparatus, it cannot make the eyes to move to the opposite side because the third nerve and fourth nerve parsi are involved, intranuclear parsi are involved, so eyes cannot move. So if a person is not able to move the eyes voluntarily on the opposite side, but by stimulating the vestibular apparatus, if you are able to move the eyes to the opposite side, it indicates that the lesion is in the supranuclear pathway. It is a supranuclear eye movement disorder. But if it is an intranuclear eye movement disorder, voluntarily also they cannot move the eyes to the opposite side. By stimulating the vestibular apparatus also, they cannot move the eyes to the opposite side because the third nerve, fourth nerves per se are involved which cannot push the medial rectus or the lateral rectus and push the eyes to the opposite side. So, if a person is not able to move the eyes voluntarily but is able to move the eyes by vestibular stimulation, VV, vestibular ocular reflex and ocular cephalic reflex, it is a supranuclear eye movement disorder. So, if he is not able to stimulate the eyes to move to the opposite side because of the saccadic pathway involvement by stimulating the vestibular apparatus and stimulating the PPRF, eyes can be moved to the opposite side. So, presence of OCR or oculocephalic reflex indicates that it is a supranuclear eye movement disorder. That's the first point. The second point is that supranuclear pathways will move the eyes together. For example, saccadic path, the frontal eye fields area number 8 on the right side will push the eyes together to the opposite side. Right medial rectus and left lateral rectus. If the frontal eye fields is not functioning well, the eyes cannot be put to the opposite side. The eyes will move towards the same side. So whether the eyes move to the opposite side or to the same side, it is symmetrical movement. They move together or they don't move together. Since it is a symmetrical movement, either they move together or they don't move together, there is no double vision. In supranuclear palsy, gaze palsy, it is a gaze palsy and therefore there is no double vision. Either they move eyes together or they, they cannot move the eyes together. So there is no double vision. But if it is an intranuclear palsy, third now or fourth now, medial rectus or lateral rectus is affected, since one eye moves, the other eye cannot move, it will result in double vision, diplopia. So, presence of double vision indicates an intranuclear eye palsy and presence of oculocephalic reflex but absence of voluntary eye movement to the opposite side indicates it is a supranuclear eye movement disorder. So, two simple points but fascinating points. So, vestibular ocular reflex or OCR is present that means person has got supranuclear eye movement disorder. If person has double vision, that means it's an infranuclear eye movement disorder. So with just these two points, we can clinch the diagnosis whether it's a supranuclear eye movement disorder or an infranuclear eye movement disorder. That is the beauty of neurology. That is the joy of clinical neurology. Without any investigation, CT scan, MRI or any investigation, by just looking at the person, his eyes, we can place the lesion and tell whether it is a supranuclear eye movement disorder or an infranuclear eye movement disorder. That is the power of the clinical neurology. I have enjoyed giving this lecture and I hope you have also enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like, subscribe and comment my YouTube channel. Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts and my FB page, Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.